just like the sun is shining Yesterday is far behind its blue skies If it rains, well maybe that's okay I decided long ago Lose myself and just let go The old life The better place, the better way to say Don't look the same Seeing things in a brand new way For the first time I gave my troubles and all my fears away I'm young but when I'm old I look back on letting go And I realize It's your timeline And you are in control No, they're cute. I don't see any kids my age. The house is coming right up, okay? So everybody, close your eyes. Come on. No cheating. All right, come on. Okay, ready, set. Whatever doesn't fit, we'll, we'll donate to charity. I'm not giving away my stuff. Okay. This is the smallest house on the whole block. I know, Gabby, but it's the only one I could find in the Westbrook school zone that we could afford, and, and Selena really wants to go to Westbrook. No, Dad, you want me to go to Westbrook. Yeah. As if having a mouthful of braces wasn't bad enough. I have to be the new kid, too. <laughs> Honey. I am okay. sure you won't be the first kid at Westbrook to wear braces. Sure. And if you are, so what? You are lucky to get into such a great school. Listen to your mom. Do you know that your grandfather coached the Westbrook Eagles to 10 state Dad, championships? I've heard and... that story like a kajillion times, and I just want to be with my friends. I see you working 12-hour shifts at a printing press and spending your whole paycheck on nail polish because your fingernails are always going to look like, like this. Very funny, Dad. Seriously, Selena, my dad would have given anything to send me to Westbrook, but with four kids and a coach's salary, we couldn't afford to live in this neighborhood. This is a dream come true for our family. All right, you may not understand this right now. You can be mad at me if you want. But we're moving in, and you're going to Westbrook. You'll thank me one day. I seriously doubt that. One day, we won't have to live in this tiny apartment. We'll have a house that looks like some kind of museum With diamond chandeliers, just keep dreaming Dad, you could have just waited to drop me off. Wow, this place hasn't changed a bit. 
When I was a kid, I used to come here after school and watch the team practice. I'd walk through these halls and make believe I was a student here. It's kind of creepy. Well, you should have seen my school. Now, that was creepy. Fighting, cutting class, smoking weed, and I was just a teacher. Hey, I wonder if they still have any of Dad's trophies here. Are you serious? I... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> The school aren't as cordial as they used to be. Westbrook's finest. Well, I gotta go, Dad. All right, I'll see you later. Go on ahead. Putting special emphasis on schools that are either overcrowded or have too few students. I don't know. I, don't I can't tell. I feel very unsuccessful today so far. I don't think it's going to be that great of a year. Oh. One favor blowing this joint and going to the other. You can eat hot bar at O'Malley's, say I. What's his meeting? Hey. Oh, I have no idea. Mission principal. Oh. Yeah. I hate meetings. Back when I was an R&D, all we did was meet, 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 meet. We'd have a meeting to prepare for the meeting, and another meeting to talk about the meeting, and then we'd have another meeting talking about how we need to cut down on the number of meetings. You know, you realize that like a third of the sentences that you say start with when I was an R&D? And if I didn't know any better, something tells me you miss it. Where's the money? Pharmaceuticals are big business, too. Yeah. You know, one of these days you're going to realize that there's more to life than being a slave to capitalism and hustling for the man. All right? Boomer, yeah. you, my friend, you have the power to shape and mold the mind of tomorrow's great leaders. In... Someday that's going to matter to you. Oh. Come on, Elijah. Go. So the school board has decided to close four more of our smaller and underperforming secondary schools and consolidate them with the new Langley High. Westbrook High will be one of those four schools. What? Closure is slated for the end of the school year. But you can't close Westbrook. Westbrook is not overcrowded and we are not underperforming. I realize that, but. What about our jobs? Some of you will have the opportunity to apply for positions at the new school. Some of us. But I'm afraid that we're going to have to start downsizing right away. That means layoffs, people. I am sorry. I know this is tough, but frankly, what choice do we have? You can keep our school open, right, people? Miss Davies, closing these schools will eliminate 12,000 of our 18,000 seat excess. The money we Westbrook save. Westbrook is one of the top schools in this state, and you're going to close it down to save money? And why should we suffer when other schools have faltered? With budget cuts and declining enrollment, fiscal prudence is more important than ever. More important than good schools and good teachers? Now, let me ask you this. What about the students? Anybody even mention your thought of the students? I can assure you, our top priority is the students. All right, everyone. I, I know this is upsetting, but uh, nothing is... Final as it is. That's exactly right. The school board will hold several public hearings before we vote next month. What happens then? You will have ample opportunity then to voice your concerns. Oh, yes, I almost forgot the most important thing. Something more important than closing schools and fine teachers? What on earth could that be? Ever since we learned of your beloved Principal Hoffman's retirement last year, we have searched high and low to find a suitable replacement. I am happy today to introduce you to someone who I am certain will guide Westbrook through these tumultuous waters over the next year. She is one of the nation's leading secondary education experts and is actually a Westbrook High alum. Please join me in welcoming your new principal, Dr. Christine Walker. What's the matter with you? You look like you saw a ghost. She do look like she's from somewhere else.
start a movement, a protest. Let, let the will of the people be known. All right, okay, you can move out of here. Elisha Bennett. <laughs> wow, it's been ages. I think that the last time I saw you, we... We were here. We were right here. It was, uh, it was that graduation dance. Yeah, that, oh, that horrible party. That horrible that our band. Parents threw because they didn't want us out on our own getting freaky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> God, you remember that band? Yeah, I that think it's still band. burned in the side of my brain. Uh, <laughs> well, your father picked you up before I had a chance to dance with you. So. <laughs> oh, sorry. <clears throat> Christine, this herb. Walker. This is, uh, this is Doris Howe, our resident drama queen. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sarah Davies, historian par excellence. Boomer Joseph, science geek. Oh, well, I was a science geek, too, or a.k.a. chemistry teacher, mm. until I decided to... Become a suit. Well, at least you can afford a suit. I mean, dress attire for me is a denim jacket and a pair of quarters from the thrift store. <sighs> what? What? I'm a teacher. Anyway, welcome home. Dr. Walker, it is so nice to have a Westbrook alum and a fellow educator on the front lines fighting for our school. <laughs> and it looks like you got here just in time to fight the revolution. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it was very nice to meet you all. It was wonderful to see you again, it's Mr. Pleasure. Bennett. And I guess I will see you all at teacher evaluations. Mm. <sighs> Can't wait. So... O'Malley's? Mm. O'Malley's. Anyone? Uh, hmm. Mr. Davis. What? So good. We're all caught up? Did you Great. see that so Morning. You know, there's no extra credit for showing up in class early. Hi, Mr. Bennett. Selena Cortez. I'm new here. Well, of course you are. You're a freshman. No, I just moved here. I don't really know anybody. Ah, right on. Welcome. Hey, what's your favorite subject? English. Well, you might get extra credit for saying that. What do you like? What are you into? Do you like sports? Do you like band? What's your um, thing? You know what? You should join the newspaper staff. Hey, we're having a meeting at lunch. You should stop by. I don't know. It's... Hey. You have a secret to surviving high school? Five your teachers? Yes. Well, that and find a coat that fits. Coke fit? Yeah, Coke, you know. You find your peeps, you find your posse, your group, people that you like, people that think like you, people that like the same things that you do. You know, people that you're actually gonna remember when all of this is over. Try a few coats on, see which one fits. Okay, now remember this. Hmm. School's closing. Hmm. I don't have a lot of time. You are right, we are. So in that case, better get started. Welcome, class of 2017. Hey, fellas. Man. Guys, it's going to be a year of wisdom. It's going to be a year of wonderment. Lots and lots of words. I promise you, this year, you're going to make your mark. I promise. All right, let's get started, shall we? I think that you may be the 37th parent that I've spoken to today, and it's only second period. Good. And we're not the only one that thinks it stinks, huh? <laughs> Mr. Cortez, I understand you needing to voice your concerns. I, I think that you might want to consider going to the public hearings. You would have Ask a question, Miss Walker. Could it be that they're not 100% sure about closing the school down? I mean, we should always hope, right? I read about you online. I, I told my wife, I said, if anybody could save Westbrook, it's you. Um, I think it's Dr. Walker, dear. Oh, no, that, that's fine. <laughs> Look, Mr. Cortez, whether Westbrook closes or not, our children deserve an outstanding education, and I intend to go about my duties as if the school will be open indefinitely, and I am urging my teachers to do the same. But I heard the teachers are being laid off. I mean, how can they work with so much uncertainty? They're teachers. Ms. Cortez, they have a responsibility. We all do. Exactly. We need to rally support from school parents. That'll get their attention. Mr. Cortez, I think that you should focus on your daughter's education. That is my best advice. Um, I hear you're a Westbrook alum. I am. 
Great, and you love the school as much as we do. I'm sure you'll do everything in your power to save it, right? Right? Thank you for your time, Dr. Walker, and um, good luck. Uh, Mr. Melville? If I have to sit down with every parent who wants to talk about the impending closing, I will never get any work done today. Do you think you could field some of the calls? You're the principal, Dr. Walker, not me. Mr. Melville, I know that you have worked at the school a long time, and I know that you aspire to... But you want me to suck it up and be a team player. I've been at the school for 30 years, first as math teacher, then as the old, reliable wingman. It's the story of my life. Second tier in the horn section, salutatorian of my graduating class, best man at all my friends' weddings, and now assistant principal. I'll handle the high-rate parents, doctor, but I'll let you handle the teachers. Yeah, I mean, I left college and I uh, went to work in R&D for a pharmaceutical company. R&D that's uh, research and development. August 18th, 1969, the last day of Woodstock. That's the day I was born. Fascinating. My parents homeschooled me. I, I guess you could call it homeschooling. I was on a tour bus with them. It was until I was in middle school. I was in a school of life. I had an insatiable... Listen, if you want to know anything about anybody at Westbrook, just ask me. <laughs> Girl, I know where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> and I feel like that is why I became a teacher. I still have that insatiable quest, and I, and I take them with me on that quest. It's just such a gas. Don't you think? Well, let's talk about you. Who are your people? Are you a real doctor? My doctor wears like a white coat and a stethoscope. Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> well, I take it you don't agree? Well, I think that you're being a bit naive, but... Listen, Mr. Bennett. Call me Elijah. Children need structure, Mr. Bennett. They need discipline, not free will. Well, this is a, a school. It's not a boot camp. Granted. But I'd like to work with you on a different approach, if you don't mind. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm all ears. All right, I have some homework for you. All right. I think that you should study the teaching styles. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have to stop you. If, if, if you've done your homework, you'll see that my children score higher nationally in language arts than any other students statewide. Mm, that's impressive. That's very impressive. But the only way to ensure that you get those results consistently is for you to truly understand how your students learn. Are they visual or verbal? Are they active or reflective? Are they inductive or deductive? Well, I actually take the time to get to know my students. You can't teach a child successfully if you don't know how his brain works and yours. Do you know how your brain works, Mr. Bennett? Okay, look, I agree with you that, that children learn differently. I do. But I don't agree about introducing formulas into a classroom. Why not? Teaching is not an art form, it's a science. <laughs> teaching is, teaching is about, look, teaching is about touching young lives. Teaching is about, is about learning, it's about nurturing, it's about, it's about guiding them spiritually. And well, wait, wait, stop right there. This is a school, not a church. Your job is to educate your students. Saving their souls is not your responsibility. I need to make sure that you are clear on that. Really? Christine, what happened to you? Mr. Bennett, have I made myself clear? Crystal, Dr. Walker. So I was thinking about having Becky write the lead story about the school closing. She's so much more eloquent than I am. What do you think, Mr. Bennett? This story doesn't call for eloquence, Jasper. It calls for fire, passion, fervor. It'll be fun. Oh, right. Get your stories in, guys. See you next Friday. See you guys. And Mr. Bennett, can you help me figure out the layout of the columns? I don't know where certain stories should go. Um, hi. Is this the newspaper meeting? Well, it was. <sighs> Sorry, I was in the yearbook staff meeting for like 10 minutes till I realized it wasn't newspaper. No problem. Entrez, s'il vous plaît. 
I'm Becky. That's the only thing she knows how to say in French. And I'm Jasper, by the way. Hi. What made you join the newspaper and not your book? I don't know. It just seemed like a good fit for me. Cool. Welcome aboard. Oh, hey, don't worry about it. I just got mine off last week. Everything is under control. Good. Call their parents. Then call the police. What? Dr. Walker, in my experience, these situations tend to escalate when the authorities are brought in. So maybe we should just send them home for the day. And then tomorrow they won't even remember what they're fighting about. School violence of any kind cannot be taken lightly, Miss Davies. Did the names Colin Bine, uh, Nickel Mines, and Newtown mean anything to you? That's a bit extreme, don't you think? Will you tell that to the parents of the children who died in those schools? And then while you're at it, you can tell it to their teachers, too. Wow. Come on, let's get to class, everyone. All right, guys, it is almost time for class. What do we got? Well, we still have room for one more story. One more story? Let's let Selena write this one. Okay, but I don't know what to write about. Well, I think we should do an expose. How about this? School lunch is revealed. What's really in your sloppy joe? Or we could do a profile on a person of interest. Someone that people don't know much about. What about Tony Cortez? He's supposedly the winningest basketball coach in the history of Westbrook High. And he's my grandfather. Well, I've never heard of him. Perfect. OK, back to the school closing. The first hearing is tomorrow night. I'm going to post something on the school's Facebook page encouraging people to come out. Oh, you know, speaking of the hearing, since you, my friend, are the editor of the school paper, I think you should speak. In, in person? Uh, yeah. How else are we going to get the school board to listen? Well, I'm already writing the article. Isn't that enough? Come on, Jasper. It's time you stepped out of your cocoon, emerged from your solitary computerized existence, and... Can you raise your voice? Yeah. Raise your voice. So anyway, Jasper's really shocked, but Mr. Ben is trying to get him to speak at the hearing. Did you know that he's only 14 and a junior in high school? Jasper, not Mr. Bennett. And I have a friend named Becky, and she's a real news hound. Yeah, but can she operate a press? This is the third time this week you've been late. And last week you didn't show up at all. OK. Believe it or not, Mrs. Howell, there is more to life than monologues and dress rehearsals. What's going on, Devin? Answer me. I'm dropping out of school, OK? I already told my parents, and well, they're fine with it. Devin, baby, you're only 16 years old. Yeah, well, they said as long as I get a job, it's cool. And what kind of job do you expect to get with no education? Hey, there have been plenty of rich dudes on the street that have never finished school. That is not acceptable. I'm calling your mother. Excuse me. Excuse me. Last time I checked, you're my drama teacher, not my parole officer. Now. Whatever I do off campus is none of your business. That's where you're wrong, young man. Now, you're very talented. You have a bright future. Well, Devin, what are you hiding? What are you doing that you don't want your parents to know about? De Devin? I'm calling your mother. I'm sorry, did you say you've never been in the cafeteria? Where have you been eating? Outside, by the picnic tables, alone. Well, may I do the honors? Am I guest? OK. Right in front of us is the jog table. Football players, basketball players, lacrosse players, and they have the smallest table. Adjacent to their table is the hot chick slash mean girl section. There's my sister over there at the head. In the back, we have the band table, moderately sized, but the chairs are a little rickety. Next to them, we have the drama club, the bait team, chorus, 
yearbook staff, and student government association. So where do we sit? You see those spots of the yearbook staff? That's ours. Anymore. Picnic table it is. All right. Now put yourself in the shoes of the writer. All right. That's gonna help you analyze the poem. Yes. How do we know if our analysis of the poem is what the writer intended? That does not matter. Not matter. What matters is what it means to you. How does it make you feel? Here. For example, check this out. Yet if hope has flown away in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. Now what do you think Poe was saying when he wrote that? Better yet, what do you guys get from it? Oh, for whom the bell tolls. Tolls for me. Eat it. Have a good day, guys. Later. Hi, guys. Ah. You eavesdropping on my class? Oh, well, I prefer to call it monitoring. <laughs> and? Interesting. Oh, well, there's a useless word for you. <laughs> hmm. I forgot to put periods between the P and the M, but other than that, that looks good. Mr. Bennett. Elijah. Mr. Bennett, you seem to wield considerable influence around here. I was hoping that you could encourage the kids to focus on their schoolwork and their jobs instead of waging war with the school board. Well, we're fighting for our school, Dr. Walker. I think it's hardly a waste of time. No, I understand that. What I was, I was just... You know if I remember correctly, when you went to high school here, you weren't really very popular, were you? You spent most of your time just hanging out by yourself. Well, if memory serves, I think you spent your time sitting in the grass writing poetry, unless you were <laughs> sweeping some helpless girl off her feet. I hardly thought you noticed. I'm not really sure what this has to do with it. Well, okay. my, my point is that I know that high school is rough. Especially if you're not part of the in crowd. But I just, I would hate to think that some, you know, some bad experiences that you had here would cause you not to stand up for your school. <laughs> Mr. Bennett, I, I, I can assure you that whatever happened to me or did not happen to me 16 years ago, it has no bearing on how I carry out my duties as a principal. Mm -hmm. Now, may I count on your help with the teachers? Help with what? What are you asking me to do? Are you asking me to tell the teachers not to fight? Not to try and save their jobs? Save their students? Save the school? No, no, you can't count on me for that. Look, if the school board wants to fight, they're gonna get a fight. Thank you for your time, Mr. Bennett. You are more than welcome, Dr. Walker. All right, essays. Who wants to go first? Anybody else? Jasper is um, trying to say, I think, is that uh, we, the, the, the parents, the students, and the teachers, would like you to reconsider closing the school. Thank you, Mr. Cortez. Mr. Cortez, thank you very much. 
but I'm afraid a small handful of parents and students. We have thousands of supporters. Really? Where are they? Well, it's... Do you have letters from these people? Petitions? Well, yes. I mean, we can get them, sir. We can get them. your sweater vest. Sorry, Jess. I knew you would choke. Come on. Dad's getting the car. Hey. I told you I couldn't do it. I let everybody down, and then I told the superintendent we could get all those signatures. I screwed up big time. Cut yourself some slack. Yeah, but tonight was wrong. Oh, tonight's gonna be forgotten if you do something amazing tomorrow. Here, everybody. File in. Um, thank you for, thank you for your attention. I promised you this will be short. I mean brief. Anyway, you see all these pictures and articles on the walls? Speak up. All these pictures and articles tell the story of Westbrook. The smiles, the friendships, even the tears. Memories that we'll look back on years from now with great fondness. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'd like to someday bring my kids back to this school and show them where I had some of the best years of my life. This is our school. Are we gonna let the school board say that we can't exist anymore? No! Are we gonna let them take away our stories and our memories? No! Are we gonna fight for Westbrook and our teachers? No! <laughs> yes, yes, yes! All right, here's what we need to do. There are 393 students at this school. If even two-thirds of the student body can get 50 people to sign our petition, that's 13,123.5 signatures. How are you gonna have the signature? No, I know we can do this. At the very least, we can come close. Now, who's with me? <laughs> now, let's show them that Westbrook spirit. It's time for us to raise our voices and be heard. I cannot even believe you are considering going back to corporate America. Dave, what about your calling? My calling? Your calling to shape the lives of your brothers and sisters. Old young minds. And this whole time I thought I was an only child. <laughs> Royal Otherwise known as the man. 
Thank you all for staying after school. I know that you are eager to get home to plan your work for tomorrow, so I will be brief. The documents that you are receiving will be of great value to you going forward. They spell out all the policies that we will be implementing in the coming months. Why do we need new policies? I mean, we're good teachers. Well, <laughs> most of us anyway. We're aiming for excellence, Mr. Joseph. Our teachers need to be high achievers. They need to zero in on their missions with laser-like focus. They need to create a high-performance mindset and establish goals for themselves and for their students. They need to be clear and they need to be consistent. So I would like you to go home and go over this document from cover to cover. And just for the sake of sparking discussion, I can stay for a few moments to gloss over some of the more urgent policy changes. It says here that you want the students to wear uniforms. I'm strongly opposed to that. <clears throat> for many, clothing is a form of okay. self-expression. You want to abandon textbooks for the iPad? Honey, these kids are going to be on the Facebook and the Twitter all day long. What is this about requiring teachers to do after-school tutoring for at-risk students? I mean, it seems like you're, you're adding a, a huge burden to the teachers of the school with, without providing any additional support. Teachers and administrators are responsible for the academic welfare of their students. And we do our jobs, Dr. Walker in the face of budget cuts, overcrowding, and impending layoffs. We're doing our jobs. Have you heard anything, Dr. Walker, about the closing of the school? The board is still holding hearings on that matter, Actually, but if we... Hearings. The, uh, there's going to be another hearing here next week, actually. I would urge you all to attend. The, uh, the students are manning quite a movement, and I, uh, I think we should follow suit. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. I don't know if this is the appropriate place for that. Well, where but... is the appropriate place, Dr. Walker? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, we are concerned about our school and our jobs, but I thought you would be too, but it looked like all you're trying to do is tear down everything that we've already built. Now, there was nothing wrong with Westbrook before you got here. Am I right, teachers? That's right. That's right. I, all right, I, I think that if we just take a moment oh. to discuss this, oh, no, we get... Oh, no, dream. What? Fragile after school? Someone must have pulled it. Fascism, must be. Nice one. <laughs> Round one. You were dying up there. I thought I'd throw you a light. You're welcome. Your ideas are perfectly in line with my vision for this district. That's why I hired you. Don't pay attention to the critics. And so what are the teachers saying about consolidation? <laughs> well, they are not happy. Okay. Fired up now. Things will die down before you know it. Have you met the teachers at Westbrook? So this is a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well then why do you look like somebody just ran over your cat? What? No, no, man. I am pumped. So, have you decided yet on who's going to be in your first round of layoffs? Just that I thought, at this point in my life, I'd be a famous scientist. I came up with a cure for male pattern baldness uh, or something. Instead, I'm here teaching science. What? So, you've already made the decision to close Westbrook. The hearings are just a formality? Look, it doesn't matter. I'm the one with the problem. It's fine. Okay, well, what's the problem? Hmm? Sheena. Sheena, my ex-wife, Sheena. I have an ex-wife yeah. named Sheena. All right, listen. Everyone assured me that you were the right person for this task. Now, if you're uncomfortable with anything... No, I'm oh, okay. fine. All right. Look, the reason why I got out of R&D is because, you know, Sheena was pushing me to take a management position. You know, I just, uh, I, I, I couldn't hack it. I... I choked. So I had to get out of there. And she said that she couldn't live on a teacher's salary. Ooh. That's when you know it's solid. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's rough, man. So you so you want to take this R&D job so you can get her back? I'm, I'm thinking about it. Look, they're going to close the school anyway. I just... Oh, look at that. It's almost time for the board meeting. 
Are we good here? Yes. I think that you need to find something that puts a smile on your face when you go to bed at night. And you wake up with first thing in the morning. I think that's it. Now, I don't know what that is for you. I mean, only you know. You're like man pretty. You could be a model. <laughs> Everything about modeling? I think you should mention that because, uh, hey, turns out I might be out of a job, so. Good. Check, please. Christine, this so-called movement of theirs, I guarantee it'll blow over in a couple of days. And I'm willing to bet they have nowhere near a thousand supporters on paper. I give them a hundred. Two hundred tops. Nine thousand five hundred? Oh, nine thousand five hundred and forty-two, to be exact. But we're still three thousand five hundred short of our goal, so we're still plugging away. Impressive, Mr. Tenney. Congratulations. But tell me, where is your data? Data? Your data. Your statistics. Your research to support your request. You see, the board has stacks upon stacks of data and statistics to back up our decision to close Westbrook. Where is your data to the contrary? Do you have that information, Mr. Tinney? Oh, uh, no, sir. No, we don't. No, I see. Well, thank you very much for these petitions. I'll make sure to share them with the board. Do we have anything else to discuss today? find more info on Westbrook for the next hearing. Oh. Hey, Dad. What was Grandpa Tony like? He was the best. Soft-spoken kind of man. Never yelled at his players or his kids. Sorry. Keep going. I don't know. I mean, that man would give you the shirt off his back, but boy, was he stubborn. Oh. He loved his family more than anything in the world. Like father, like son, huh? <laughs> I'd give anything to be half the man Tony Cortez was. What's with the sudden interest in your grandfather? Nothing, I was just curious. Good luck with your research. <laughs> Yo! Oh, Mrs. Howell, uh, can this wait till tomorrow, please? Absolutely. But this won't take long. I read in your handout that you want to make all the faculty and staff reapply for their jobs. Uh, yes, that is the plan. Well, in that case, allow me to introduce myself. <laughs> I think that I already know you. No. You've met me, but you have no idea who I am. I came to Westbrook straight out of college. This was my first job. Oh, and you know what? I wouldn't trade a minute of it. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you've never wanted to do anything with your life besides be a high school drama teacher? Well, I'm sure you didn't mean that the way it sounded. I love what I do, Dr. Walker, and I love this school. Did you know that one of our students is dropping out? 16 years old, he's given up on his education. Oh, he's headed down a dangerous path. I can feel it. And I am doing everything I can to save him. But so far, I'm fighting a losing battle. Do you know how that feels? No matter how many students I save, I always remember the ones I lose. Now that is a little tidbit that you are not gonna find on my employment application. You know, one of these days, you need to come from behind that desk 
Walk around this place. Get to know your teachers. Get to know your students. If you want to lead us, you need to get to know us. Mrs. Hell, I have the utmost respect for what you do. I was a teacher too, remember? But respectfully, I do not need to know what your favorite color is or what my student's shoe size is to be a good principal. But you do need to remember what it was like to be one of us. You need to remember how it feels. Do you remember how it feels, Dr. Walker? I don't think so. I just think that we need some fresh ideas, something to keep the momentum going, you know? Okay, so why don't we split up? Jasper, you go to the band and drama table, I'll go to the jocks, and Becky, you take the artsy kids, and we'll see what they think about all this. Wait. Which table's which? You know what? I think it even matters anymore. The last three hours one. This is so beautiful. are witnessing a movement, my brothers. Diverse people, uniting for a common cause, to affect change and fight for the rights. I dig it. I really dig it. Power to the people. How in the world did you get a teaching certificate? She is brilliant. She's a little quirky. She's brilliant. Kind of like you. So, uh, did you decide on that r and gig? We're still negotiating. You know, I'm trying to get him to up the ante, but... If they can meet my terms, then, yeah, I'm out of dodge. All right. Oh, how do people? Oh, peace. <laughs> you know, studies show that students who sit closer to the teacher get better grades. That's not true. Yes, it is. <laughs> you got straight A's in chemistry, right? Yes. Yeah, where did you sit? Here. Here, maybe. No? Okay. Um, here. Left side, front row, first chair. I bet everybody wanted to sit next to you, too, huh? <sighs> yes, because they knew I had all the answers. <sighs> so Doris Howell told me that I need to remember what it's like to be one of you. What she doesn't realize is that I remember all too well. What's funny, though, is I can't remember what was harder, being a teacher or being a student. When I was teaching in D.C., I was surrounded by apathy, but between the teachers and the students, nobody cared. And then when I was a student here, I was, I don't know, it was like, I was just invisible. I couldn't wait to get out of this school and get out of this town. Well, why'd you come back? Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't well like back then. All right, I have to say it. things haven't changed that much, right? No, no, I just don't think that, uh, I don't think people get you. Do you? I'm trying to. You just need to find yourself. Did you really just say that? <laughs> I'm gonna share something with you. and Danielle, eternally. At least that's what we thought we got married. But a year later, she was gone. I was lost. She died, I wanted to die too. I'm sorry, I can't imagine that kind of loss. Losing yourself. Whether you're blinded with grief or you're just 
trying to live up to someone else's expectations. It can happen faster than you think. Well, that may be true, but everything that you see here is me. I know exactly who I am. Really? You sure about that? You know how I ended up finding myself? God. Oh, actually, I didn't find him. He found me. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just never thought of you as a Bible thumper. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm far from it. But I do believe in God. And I lean on him from time to time for guidance. I don't really think about those kind of things. I didn't think about those kind of things either until I had to. I mean, it's funny the places you wind up with there's no place else to hide. Well, thank you for your perspective. I'm not quite sure how finding God is going to help me run this school, but... Yeah, you'd be surprised. You didn't think you got all this amazing chemistry on your own, did you? <laughs> so... May I carry your books, Christine? Yes, you may, Elijah. <laughs> Mr. Bennett? Sir. Many courts has. A pleasure. She so says wonderful things about you. Yeah, well, everything she says is true. Look, Mr. Bennett, you've got to find a way to convince the board to keep Westbrook open. And you heard what they said. They need facts, data. Yeah, I, I, heard, I, heard I don't know where to find that information. I Everything online is generic. Okay, Mr. Cortez, I, I get it. No, I don't do. think you do, Mr. Bennett. I worked hard to bring my child to this school. And now the school board's gonna just slam the door in my face? I mean, how's a guy like me reach or get through to those stuffed shirts who only care about money? I think you just need to... Be yourself and speak from your heart. I think that's a brilliant idea. Kids. All right. A for effort. B for answers. Not bad. Close, but yeah, not really that close. Don't get frustrated. You'll get it. Doogie, good job. When you go to medical school, I'm going to let you operate on me, man. Very nice. OK, your test makes me sad. Are you even in this class? Dude, another perfect score, dude. It's like totally rad. Where have you been all my life, right? <laughs> Wait, hey, where have you been the past few days? This has been for fighting. Some dude called me dumb, so I popped him in the mouth. Okay, see, <laughs> fighting is dumb, but you are not. See all this right here, see this? It's not just a hat rack, my friend, okay? You're like a straight A student, dude. Yeah, in physics, I'm failing everything else. I was filming my last school too, but the teachers kept passing me because they wanted to get rid of me. I was always getting in trouble and stuff. What kind of trouble? I don't know. That's not an answer. You can tell me. I'm ADHD, so sometimes... Sometimes I can get out of hand when I don't take my meds. Okay. So when you say you're failing, what? Failing, dude, like, epically. Like, like, I already know I'm not gonna graduate. But you're brilliant in physics. I mean, you're brilliant. <laughs> yeah, go figure. Anyway, I gotta bounce. Later, Mr. J. Liam, wait. Maybe I can help you out. You got your books with you? Yeah. All right, let's take a look at some stuff. Okay, Miss Harris, just calm down. No, no, no. Of course I'll help you. Yes, I'm going there right now. Hey, I got your text. What's up? Oh, God, Devin Harris. Left home, hasn't been back in a couple of days. Okay. Where are you going? To find him. Look, Doris, you can't just roll up on the kid and drag him home. I mean, he doesn't even go to school here anymore. Look, let's just call the police, no. I'm sure. Now, his mother explained to me why he quit school. His father lost his job. The family needs money. She said that he has been hanging out with some kids in Linville Heights. 
Honey, I grew up near Linville. I know what that means. I've got to find him. I'm going to go with him. No, you are not. Now, too many people show up here is going to run scared like a rabbit. I think I can get through to him. I just need to go alone. Okay. Hey, Doris, please. Elijah, hey. you are not going to stop me. Hey, I know, I know. But can you spare 60 seconds? Sixty seconds. <laughs> Heavenly Father, the darkness closes in on us. Our hands are poised for battle. Our weapons are drawn and ready. We mourn our losses and struggle to grasp what we do not understand. That's very true. But every sunrise brings us a new day full of hope and possibilities. It brings us new opportunities to love forgive, That's right. to share. To trust and to belong. We stand in the face of fear, yet we are not afraid. We open our hearts to let your love envelop us and guide us. Don't play with me, this now get me. What is that? This is Howell. Devin, how could you do something like this? Oh, hello, officer. So everything is fine. Just go ahead. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Now you gonna laugh in my face? Officer! These are stolen goods. Please take this young man into custody. You don't laugh in my face. This ain't no joke. This is your life. You got all that Wait, 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 wait. No. Oh, I said you wanted to help. I am helping you. And I'll tell your mother where she can come and pick you up. And we pray for the discernment and the strength to always do what is right. We ask that you lift us up, Father, and circle us with your light and wrap us in your perfect love. Today, tomorrow, and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Just like them, my father loved Westbrook High. But his greatest sadness was that he couldn't afford to live in the Westbrook school zone. I grew up in one of the worst parts of Charlotte. So needless to say, my school wasn't like Westbrook. My community, nothing like West Haven. I worked 12 to 14 hour shifts at a printing company to provide for my family. My wife and I scrimped and saved for four and a half years. And finally, our dream came true. We bought a tiny two-bedroom house 45 minutes from my job just so I could send my daughter to the best school in the state. That was my father's dream for me. This is my dream for my daughter. And that's who I was. A nameless, faceless kid. Scared, timid, shy. A kid without a voice. And then one day I spoke up. And Westbrook listened. And that's where I realized I was exactly where I belonged. I don't ever want to be lost in the crowd again, where people don't know me, don't hear me, they don't see me. Westbrook High breeds love, compassion, wisdom, and a sense of belonging. It is a place of academic and moral excellence. There are few schools like Westbrook. We must fight to salvage this special place at all costs. By saving Westbrook, you save our dreams. Our community. 
Our friendships. Our voices. You'll be saving us. Thank you all for those wonderful sentiments. You have brilliantly articulated the emotional cost to closing Westbrook. But again, I have to ask you about the financial cost. No, no, we, we've requested data from your office. Closing a school is never an easy decision, but in this case, it is the practical one. The salaries and the upkeep alone are enough for us to justify our position. Every dollar counts, doesn't it, Mr. Rayburn? More than you realize, Mr. Bennett. Well, that's why the teachers of Westbrook are ready to forego their step increases and their raises for the 2013-2014 school year. Well, Mr. Bennett, that is very gracious of you, but that's not necessary. It's just our way of giving back to our school, sir. Yes, sir. Parents won't mind kicking in a little help too. We could paint, we could repair. Yeah. That'll save some money, won't it? People, ladies and gentlemen, we have one more hearing before the vote. Now, we will take all of this into consideration, but in the meantime. In the meantime, we got a lot of work to do. So come on, what do you say? Let's yeah. go. Let's go. all over the district who are pitching in to help their schools. Oh, I love it, girl. Look at what we started. Nope. <laughs> this is how. Oh, Miss Harris. You said you were going to help my son. I had to get him off the street. You could have brought him home. You don't think I tried? I think you wanted to make an example of my son. And now because of you, he has a record. All he wanted to do was help his family. I understand, Miss Harris, but he went about it the wrong way. Now, he would be no good to you, no good to himself, if he gave in to a life of crime. I didn't come here for your self-righteous posturing. No. You came here because you want to blame someone. Well, if turning Devin in now will save him later, then I accept the blame. Now, he's going to be out in a couple of days. I suggest you and your husband urge him. No, order him to come back to school. He can get a part-time job if he wants. I'll even help him find one. But Miss Harris, don't give up on him. And please don't let him give up on himself. 
Now, if you'd like, we can go into my classroom and sit down and try to figure this mess out. Get your son back in school, okay? Come on. Hey, ladies, class. Great news, the mainstream media has caught wind of our movement. Yeah, I saw it on TV this morning. Oh, huh. dude. This is Primo, brothers and sisters. Primo! Good afternoon, everyone. I assume you are all discussing ways to convince the board to keep the school open. I have some information that might be helpful. Can I join you? Let's see what you got. That's great. Where'd you find it? I was looking up a student's file in there at once. It's a start at least. No. I remember this. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. That's yeah, my first NBA game ever. Me and Dad. Just you and I, you know, I ate so many hot dogs that night that I got sick and threw up, but it was still one of the best nights of my life. <laughs> Is this Abuela at her wedding? She looks so pretty. Mm. Yeah, she does. Look, I can see the resemblance. <laughs> mm. Oh, <laughs> oh this is me and my Boy Scout outfit. Mom took that picture. Thanks for making me bring down this box since I haven't seen these in forever. Who's the boy in this picture? Is that you? Yeah. Well, who's the man that's with you? sister this Selena, but um, I had two dads. The first one ran off and left your abuela alone with four small children. The second one, Tony Cortez, he stepped up, came along, married her, and became the father that we didn't have. I was, I was four years old when he got married. Tony Cortez isn't your real father? No, he was. Absolutely he was. But you said that... No, no, I, I meant he wasn't my biological father, but, sweetheart, Tony Cortez was the only father I ever knew. Okay, he loved my mom and us. He kept us together through thick and thin. He taught us right from wrong. He showed us the true meaning of love and, and selflessness. That's what a real father does. That's why I loved him so much. Not because he was a great coach. Because he was a great man. I appreciate you bringing this to my attention. I am disappointed, but frankly, I'm not concerned. Even though she's siding with the protesters, I still have enough votes on the board to approve the closure. Yes, sir, I just uh, thought you should know. It's not right getting these kids' hopes up anymore. Hey, you did the right thing by calling me, Robert. But I have to say this, does make me wonder if she's really the right person to take the helm at Langley. What? 
Dr. Walker's going to be principal at Langley. Yeah. Most folks don't know that, but I thought for sure she would have told you. I mean, you being her assistant principal and all. How long has she known about this? Since the end of last year. <laughs> Robert, the only reason why she's here is to close Westbrook and transition to Langley. Well, I'm sorry. I thought you knew. together the entire school community to discuss some of the policies that we will be implementing. I think that it's the best way to get everything out in the open, answer any of your questions, discuss any of your concerns. Now I know that some of these ideas are a little unpopular. Do you plan to implement these policies when you become principal at Langley, Dr. Walker? From your expressions, I can tell you're as surprised as I was, just like we were all surprised about the school closing, but not you, Dr. Walker. In fact, Dr. Walker's sole purpose in coming to Westbrook was to close the school and facilitate the transition to Langley, where she's already been hired as principal. What's he talking about? See, Dr. Walker doesn't care about us. All she cares about is her career. OK, now, I think you're out of but Don't believe me? Ask Dr. Rayburn. Better yet, let's ask Dr. Walker. Well, when I first came to Westbrook, is this true or not? Yes, it's true. I, but then I realized you that- You wanted this, to close this school all along. You wanted, you were pretending all this time. to mislead any of you. I, I have learned so much since I've been here, and it's... I'm really sorry. Same way in R&D. Why are you speaking of R&D? Uh, yeah. You want to know what I decided, don't you? I want to know what you decided. All right. Well, I'm going to have to tell you later, then. I... Yeah, you want to grab coffee after school or something? Uh, uh, today, I can't. I'm actually meeting an old friend. But later. All right. All right, see ya. I don't know what made me think that no one was going to find out. It. Yes, it's me thinking I'm smarter than everybody else. You know, it was the first time that I started to feel like less of an outsider, but I guess that didn't last long. Look, Chris, I didn't invite you here to listen to you lick your wounds. You're hardly the victim. So what did you ask me here for? To tell me what an awful, selfish person that I am, that it's my fault that Westbrook Look, closed? this doesn't have anything to do with the students or the teachers or the school, all right? This has to do with you allowing yourself to be Rayburn's puppet. I thought that closing Westbrook was a responsible decision. Okay, but was it right? Look, I know that Rayburn has been dreaming of building a mega school for years. Right? He just needed the right time and the right place and the right henchmen to make that a reality. And you know what? I think you finally found her. I obviously don't think that I'm capable of making my own decisions. No, I think that you allow ambition to cloud your judgment. I think that you forgot what it was like to be a student here, to be a teacher. You know, I think that once upon a time, you, you actually thought about family and tradition and people's feelings. 
You know, I don't know if you can no longer wrap your head around those things, but the facts are that our school is excelling. That our students are excelling. That our teachers are excelling. You can't ignore that. You know what? We might lose our jobs. We might lose our school. I gotta tell you, that's nothing compared to losing your soul. Over the course of these hearings, you have all made very passionate and compelling arguments on behalf of your school. I would like to thank you for attending these hearings and, well, voicing your concerns. And now that we have heard from everyone. Not everyone. The teachers, students, and parents have laid out their heart and soul for this board. But now I'd like to lay out some facts. So you can't assume that you will have a 100% transfer rate. Public school enrollment has increased at a slower pace than homeschool and private school enrollment, all due to the decline in the number of neighborhood schools. The graduation rate for Westbrook is 89.6% compared to 80.9% statewide. Westbrook students score above national averages in both the ACT and the SAT, and Westbrook has been a North Carolina school of excellence more times than any other school in the district. Now I contend, and research will bear out, that our success is due to the fact that Westbrook is a small community school with a tight-knit group of committed teachers, staff, parents, and students. Now this is a study that I conducted last year with a group of principals from newly consolidated schools. Now they all acknowledge what we will quickly learn if we close Westbrook, that while we may cut spending in a few areas, we will be cutting something of far greater value our legacy, our academic edge, and our sense of community. Are you done? Not quite. Now the data that I have provided is based on facts and research, but there is no data as compelling as the living, breathing data in this room. Now every one of us, including me, has been molded by our experiences here at Westbrook High. And because of those experiences, well, we are simply better. So I stand before you today proud to be a Westbrook High Eagle and very, very, very proud to have been your principal. And those opposed? <laughs> the proposal to close Westbrook High School and merge it with Langley High is hereby denied. <laughs> help us out. What's going on? Well, we have committed parents, brilliant students, fabulous teachers, and a wonderful school that we hope is going to be around forever. What we don't have is a principal. Yeah, we thought maybe you could recommend someone. Or better yet, why don't you stick around? 
be our principal. If you have us. I don't know what to say. Say yes. Yes. Well, speak up. <laughs> yes. Yes! <laughs> Hey, come with me. Nope. Come on. You expect me to carry 20 pieces by myself? I'll come with you. Uh, you, Mr. J. Where have you been? I've been looking everywhere for you. My grades. And? Dude. Dude! I knew you could do it. Couldn't have done it without you. No one else believed in me. Not like you. Thanks. Keep it. You still want to go back to R&D? R&D? <laughs> Come on, man. What are you kidding me? I mean, I'm a teacher. Westbrook High and the greatest dad in the history of the world. Next to mine. Remember when you told me that one day I would thank you for sending me to Westbrook? Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Need some uh, water bottles. Good guy. I'll help you. You're doing great. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we always seem to end up right back here, don't we? Here is the auditorium. <laughs> well, yeah. Here. You know, here isn't like here. Where it all started. Seems like life always brings us right back to where it all started. That's not such a bad thing, is it? No, not always. We better get this water back before uh, Doris sends out a search party. That's a good idea. Wait. 
get that dance in your place, mm -hmm. Dad. Good luck. <laughs> Lord, you're the only one, only one who didn't sin, only one who didn't bend with temptation pressing in. First, Adam gave in. After that, Abraham, Noah did, both did, and many men before them. Yes, even Israel. After you split the Red Sea, after you rescued them from Egyptian tyranny. Sanity was overthrown. Serpent with